In this video, I'm trying some new to us easy family meals. And while it has been a delight to share lots of easy family meal ideas here on See Mindy Mom, one of the coolest things about being a YouTube creator is getting to engage with the audience. So all of these recipes are coming from the comment sections of my videos. These are all viewer submitted recipes. Tonight, I'm giving this pasta recipe a go. It says to add Kalantani pasta to a skillet where you crisped up bacon, removed, then sauteed with the bacon grease and a little butter, fresh red onion, fresh broccoli, fresh halved Brussels sprouts, and at the end, add in minced garlic, the zest of one lemon, and the juice of one lemon. It makes a delicious pasta. I am not familiar with Kalantani pasta. I may not even be saying that right. Maybe that's a brand name, I'm not sure. But what I do have, is cavatappi. So that is what I'm going to use in this recipe. Also, I really like Brussels sprouts, but a lot of my family are not huge fans. So instead of using halved Brussels sprouts, I'm gonna shave these. I'm just gonna use my grater to make like little Brussels sprout pieces from about half this one pound bag of Brussels. Amending this to say that I ended up just using a knife to chop the Brussels sprouts. The grater was making them way too fine. And really this right here is the consistency that I'm wanting for the Brussels sprouts. I used some kitchen shears to chop up my bacon into little pieces and it's been sauteing for about 10 minutes or so here. So it's about ready to set aside on a paper towel lined plate to drain. I am going to set aside about half of that to use in another recipe and then the half that's left will add back in here in a minute. I gave my red onion a head start here in the bacon grease. This is a quarter of a red onion chopped that's been sauteing and now I'm going to add the rest of my vegetables. This is one crown of broccoli chopped up and then my half pound of Brussels sprouts chopped as well. I'm going to add a little salt, pepper, and I also thought a little red pepper flake would go really well in this dish so I'm going to add probably about a quarter of a teaspoon or so in there. I'm gonna give that a nice stir, bring my heat back up to medium low. I turned it down so the bacon grease could calm down just a little bit when I was adding things. I'm just gonna let that saute until the vegetables start to get tender. I almost forgot, it did say to add a little butter, so this is a couple tablespoons as well to supplement the grease that's in there. Okay, my veggies are starting to get tender. So now I am going to add in a little bit of garlic, probably a tablespoon or so of this garlic. I'm gonna zest this lemon as much as I can. Now I'm adding the juice from the lemon. These are pretty big lemons, so I'm probably just gonna use half. Give that a little stir. And now I'm ready to add my pasta. I cooked up half of that one pound bag, so eight ounces of the cavatappi, and I just let it sit in the pot. I turned the heat off so it would stop cooking. It's been sitting over here. Cooked it to al dente. Now I'm gonna add it to the pan. I actually want a little bit of the water to get into my big pot here so that it can sort of help deglaze the pan. Just a little bit more water, Just stir that up. Now I'm ready to add my bacon back in and it's ready to serve. Yum. This is one of the best parts of my job right here, the tasting, and I have to say, this turned out fantastic. I'm always a little bit leery of pastas that don't have like really thick or creamy sauces, but this one, really good. I can taste a little bit of that citrus from the lemon, a little bit of richness from the bacon, a much lighter pasta than like an Alfredo or even than like a meaty spaghetti sauce or something like that. So probably pretty good recipe for the summer. Mm. Two thumbs up. You are currently sitting in the cabinet over my crock pot, or at least the spot on the counter where I usually put my crock pot when I'm cooking with it because I'm about to throw some pork chops in here. A few months back, I posted a community post where I asked you guys to send me some of your favorite pork chop recipes. It's not a cut of meat that I cook with a lot, but I'd like to because a lot of times they're affordable. And in fact, I saw some that were marked down for quick sale in my grocery store recently. So this seems like a super easy pork chop recipe that can be used in a variety of ways. Season the pork chops with one packet of dry ranch seasoning. Combine chicken broth with cream of bacon soup. Cook them in the crock pot three to four hours on high or six to eight on low. And then you can turn them over mashed potatoes, rice, noodles, vegetable of your choice, etc. I'm going to make just a few adjustments to this recipe. So let me show you how I'm making it. I've got my pork chops in the slow cooker here. And I didn't realize until I took them out of the package that they're bone in pork chops, but that's okay. I think this will work with boneless or bone in pork chops. I'll just remove the bones later on when I shred up the meat. This is about a pound and a half. So once I take out the bones, we're looking at like a little over a pound. So I'm actually only going to use half 
of this ranch mix. I'm pretty sure I have seen cream of bacon soup in the grocery store before, but I actually rarely use canned cream soups anymore because I learned a really easy way just to make them on the stove. So let me show you how I'm doing that to add to this recipe. In my little saucepan here, I have half a cup of chicken broth. You could use half a cup of a different kind of broth. Now I'm adding half a cup of milk. By the way, my stove is off. That's very important. These ingredients are cool. I'm adding also two tablespoons of cornstarch. I'm gonna whisk that all together and then I'm going to turn my heat on and I'm gonna keep stirring this until it starts to thicken. If you were to heat up the liquids first and then add the cornstarch, you're gonna get a bunch of cornstarch clumps in there. That's why you wanna add the cornstarch while the ingredients are you know, cool or at least room temperature and then it will start to thicken. Normally I use three quarters of a cup each of broth and milk and three tablespoons of cornstarch. That would equal about the equivalency of one can of cream soup. But since I'm making kind of a small batch recipe of these pork chops, I decided to use just a little bit less today. Okay, this is already thickening up. Seriously, it only takes like a minute or so on the stove. And once it starts to get thick, it will thicken fast. So I am going to pour this into my slow cooker with the pork chops now. Now I am throwing in one more cup of chicken broth. And I'll give that a little bit of a stir. I probably should have added the chicken broth and the cream soup together first before I put it in here, but it's fine. It's all gonna get shredded up together once the meat cooks, so it'll all combine just fine. This is the rest of the bacon from the pasta that I already made, This the bacon that I set aside. So I'm just gonna toss this in here. I'm gonna pop the lid on and let this cook on low for about five to six hours until the meat is ready to shred up. When the pork chops are done cooking and I shred them up, I'll be sure that I remove the bones. Obviously, if you're using bone-in pork chops, you're gonna remove them at that time. And then I think I'm going to serve this over rice. I have some steam in the bag rice pouches in the freezer that'll be super easy so that I can complete this meal, you know, scrounge around for some vegetables or maybe some fruit to go along with it and we'll give it a try. I feel like this is just a little bit too thin. I mean, like the sauce is a little bit too thin, probably because I use less meat if you were making this recipe. So I have a little bit of sour cream here, like maybe half a cup or so. I'm gonna go ahead and stir that in and then just let it sit um, for a minute or two and see if that will help it thicken up a little bit. You could also do a little cornstarch slurry in this to thicken it up if you didn't wanna do the sour cream. I thought about Greek yogurt too. I have some plain Greek yogurt, but I've already tasted this and it is super tasty even without adding the sour cream in at the end. And I'm just going to make up a little salad to go along with this and then it will be ready. Yum. Today's video is sponsored by Good Chop, which is a great way to get high quality cuts of meat delivered right to your doorstep. Things like 100% grass fed beef, free range and organic chicken, humanely raised pork, wild caught seafood, and so many other options. With Good Chop's products, there are no antibiotics or added hormones. It's sourced from right here in the US. Plus they have a 100% money back guarantee so you can try it risk free. We have been getting Good Chop boxes for several months. So you have heard me talk about the quality and just deliciousness of their steaks repeatedly. But we also really like their chicken. We've had their shrimp, their salmon fillets. We recently got a package of trout from them that we are enjoying throwing on the grill. We've also had pork products like pork shoulder and pork chops and the bacon that you actually just saw in the previous recipe. Right now you can enjoy $120 off with Good Shop. Just go to goodchop.com slash YouTube and use my code cmindymom120 or click the link in the description box below to get $120 off across your first four boxes with Good Shop. With summer here, grilling season is upon us so there's never been a better time to try out Good Shop because they have over 60 cuts of meat to choose from and you can customize your box according to what you want and your tastes and preferences. So if you have been thinking about giving Good Shop a try, take advantage of that $120 off. Good Shop prides itself on sourcing only the best and they're so sure you're gonna like it that if you don't like your first box, they will give you your money back. Just follow that link in the description box below or go to goodshop.com slash YouTube and use my code cmindymom120. And thank you again to Good Shop for sponsoring today's video. I love this. Sloppy Joseph's, like Sloppy Joe's, but next level. One pound of ground beef, salt and pepper, and half a cup each of salsa, ketchup, and brown sugar. Simmer together for 15 minutes or so. Serve on burger buns with American cheese and bread and butter pickles. We like Famous Dave's because they have a little kick 
yummy. Well, I don't have the bread and butter pickles, although my son would be super excited because he loves pickles, but I do have everything else. So we're gonna give this one a go tonight. I am just finishing up browning one pound of ground beef and I am using 90-10 ground beef. Normally I look for 85-15, but I wasn't able to find it at a decent price in my store. So I went for this one and now I'm adding half a cup of brown sugar, half a cup of salsa, half a cup of ketchup. Slap that Joe, slap, slap that Joe. You'd have to be my age or older to even get that reference. Salt to taste, pepper to taste. And I am adding a couple teaspoons of Worcestershire because I'm just a fan of it. So just about any time I make something with beef, it's going in. Stir it up, stir, stir it up. Okay, I'm gonna turn my heat down to low and I'm gonna let this simmer for, you know, 10, 15 minutes. And while that is simmering, I am going to rustle up some fruit and maybe something crunchy to go along on the side with these. I toasted up my buns. <laughs> I always like to toast the bread with sandwiches like this because I feel like it helps it stay together a little bit. So I'm gonna finish putting these together by topping the sandwich with just a little bit of shredded cheese, like so. Pop that bun on so that the cheese will get nice and melty and we'll be ready to taste it. And I think I have a taste tester right over here, a volunteer taste tester ready to go. Mm, that's good. What do you think, Brick? It's good. Give me on a scale of one to 10. A nine. A nine, really? High praise, okay. Nine for the Sloppy Josephs, the upgraded Sloppy Joe, yum. Here's a little behind the scenes, sort of insider YouTube information, if you will. I mentioned at the beginning of this video that these recipes were all submitted as comments by my viewers on other videos. And actually leaving a comment is a great way to support the YouTubers that you like and that you watch regularly. Because YouTube actually uses audience engagement, those thumbs up, those comments, as a way to determine how popular a video is. And if they determine that it's pretty popular, they're gonna start to promote it to other viewers that other people they think might want to watch it. So if you are looking for a really easy way to support the creators that you like, leaving the comment is a good way to do it. I've got something going in the crock pot that is really interesting. This is a combination of ingredients I would not have thought to put together. Actually, the ingredients themselves, I don't use a whole lot anyway, but to put them together, I don't think I would have thought of this. So I'm really interested to see how it turns out. The original recipe is for sweet and tangy chicken, bone-in chicken pieces. This person uses legs or thighs, 14 ounces of apricot jam. You can substitute peach if needed. Eight ounces of Thousand Island dressing, one packet of dry onion soup, Mix. You put the chicken in a baking dish, season it with salt and pepper. This person uses seasoned salt. You whisk the other ingredients together and pour it over the chicken. Bake at 400 degrees for 45 minutes or until the chicken is done. I wanted to make this in the slow cooker. So I put the chicken breast in the bottom of the slow cooker, seasoned it with salt and pepper. I poured the onion soup mix over the top and then put little dollops of the apricot jam. I used half of an 18 ounce jar. And then I poured the bottle of Thousand Island dressing over the top. I put just a little bit of water in the bottle and shook it up to get like the rest of the dressing on it. I popped the lid on it. It's been cooking on low. After about five or six hours, I should be able to shred this up and then I'll figure out what to do with it. I was at CVS today shopping. I'm actually working on another video for you guys that you should be seeing pretty soon. And they had these Betty Crocker blueberry muffin mixes on clearance for 39 cents. <laughs> so I definitely picked up a few of those. We eat these a lot. So I'm going to whip these up. I always add a few things to them to kind of stretch it from six muffins to 10 and just make them better. I usually say this to some of you, it probably seems weird to have blueberry muffins with dinner. I just grew up with that. Did anybody else grow up having blueberry muffins for dinner? My mom served them with dinner probably as frequently as she did like biscuits or bread. I don't know why, but this was like a thing in my household. Anybody else? Leave me a comment. If I look like I have changed my clothes and my hair and my makeup and put glasses on, it's because I have. It's actually the next day and I'm circling back to finish telling you about this dinner. I had some kids who are basking in the freedom of their first few days of summer vacation who wanted to bake some cookies last night. So I let them take over the kitchen and I got some b-roll that I'm going to show you now of how this meal finished up and turned out. When the chicken was done cooking, it smelled absolutely fantastic. I was able to shred that with a couple of forks and I was trying to decide what starch to serve with this, noodles or rice. I ended up going with some baked potatoes because I had a few in the pantry I wanted to use up and the kids were turning on the oven to bake cookies anyway. I also tasted the chicken and it was sweet and tangy just like the recipe stated. And I thought that something like a Swiss cheese would be really good with this, but I only had a few slices of provolone, so that's 
what I put on the potato with the chicken and it was fantastic. I just steamed some veggies in the microwave, served this with the blueberry muffins that I made up and it was a really fantastic dinner. I definitely think this recipe was a winner for us. That being said, it definitely is that kind of sweet and savory flavor. So if that's not your thing, this recipe might not be for you, but I also think it would be the best over rice, maybe even with like a mango or a pineapple salsa, you know, some kind of relish like that that has a touch of that sweetness as well. Maybe some black bean and corn salsa, but four ingredients, super easy to throw in the crock pot. I'm really glad we tried this. If you like this style of video, leave me a comment and let me know because I have saved lots of viewer submitted recipes over the years so I can make another video like this one. Or YouTube thinks you might wanna watch this one. Make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss any future videos and I'll see you there.